So we got something interesting today. Uh, I actually saw someone playing something similar and then I decided I'm going to make my own version of it and optimize it. And on paper, I thought the deck looked really bad, but in practicality and actually playing this deck, it is very, very decent and kind of offers something different while playing Runix. So we're going to look at Runic Sword Soul with a small 10e package in here. Uh, if you don't know what each Sword Soul effect does, go watch my Sword Soul video on the channel that I did a while back. Um, so first we have 10e Spirit Adhara. We're just running one. We got three Sword Soul of Moyi. Two Sword Soul of Taya. Three Incredible Plasia the Virtuous. Two Sword Soul Strategist Long Law. Three Tenyi Spirit Vishuda. One Tenyi Spirit Ashuna. And then three Sword Soul Emergence. And then one Sword Soul Blackout. And that's it for the Sword Soul package. Now I know you guys are probably wondering why are you running uh, Sword Soul while you're also running Runic if you don't have a battle phase? Well, the entire point of running the Sword Soul package in there isn't to do damage or isn't for the battle phase. It's mainly because it offers you more disruption and more protection uh, versus just playing regular runics. Like you have the Long Wand, which can easily get you into Baron de Floor to allow you to have a negate. Um, because things like Cosmic Cyclone that are running around really heavily in the format right now can't be stopped by uh, Runic Wings because it's not Destruction, it's Banish. But Baron de Floor can stop that Cosmic Cyclone. The other really good reason of running the Sword Soul package in there is Supreme Sovereign uh, Chen Ying is really decent because he gains, for each Banished card, he gets 100 attack and defense. And so if you do end up uh, against a wall where you don't have any of your Runic cards, and you are going to have to attack your opponent to do damage. You do have an alternate win con by kind of clubbing your opponent to death. And so the 100 attack defense gain is really good. And the fact that your opponent loses 100 attack defense, attack defense for every banished card is also really good. But the main reason we're running this guy um, is you can banish one card. Sorry, uh, if a card is banished, period. Um, you can banish one card from both your opponent's field and graveyard. You can only use that effect once per turn. And if you'd be destroyed, you can banish a card instead. But the main takeaway there is all your runic cards that are going to have the banish function from the top of your opponent's deck, uh, all of them will trigger his effect. So being able to have, let's just say, destroy a special summon monster and then banish a card from the grave and then banish a card from the field um off pretty much any of your runics and then the swords of supreme sovereign it's, it's it's a pretty good combo it offers just a little bit more to kind of get you over uh the hump that you might be facing depending on how strong your opponent's board is like if you have to go second or something also, the surprise factor of this deck is really good because sometimes I will have my runic cards and I want to be playing my runic like line to mill my opponent, but I know they might have Ash or something. So I can bait Ash or Maxi or whatever else I want uh, using the Sword Soul package because if I play any of these first, most people aren't going to be looking out for runic Sword Soul. They're just going to think it's regular Sword Soul and they're going to react accordingly. So it gives you kind of the element of surprise while running the deck as well. But really good synergy from all the runic cards and uh, the Supreme Sovereign. Um, Sword Soul Grandmaster, uh, he's decent just for the effect negate. He's also good just to search and deck then. Because uh, Sword Soul can search so much and you can deck then so much with it, you'll be able to kind of burn up these cards faster to get to your runic cards and just keep cycling them. Also, uh, Sword Soul Blackout gives you an out to things like Anti-Spell, and so does uh, Baxia and Coral Dragon. So having multiple outs to things like Anti-Spell, Imperial Iron Wall, and the things that really hurt the runic part of the deck 
are really great and that's why the synergy for this is just surprisingly good looks terrible on paper but plays really really well but now let's go ahead and get over to the runic side of the deck so we got our runic fountain you can activate runic quick play spells from your hand during your opponent's turn once per turn if you activate a runic quick play spell card you can target up to three of your runic quick play spells in your graveyard place them on the bottom of your deck in any order then draw the same number of cards and this once per turn is not a hard once per turn so if you have multiple runic fountains you can just activate another runic fountain and then do the runic fountain add back to deck and draw effect again uh if you wanted to run three runic fountains in here you'd probably just do this or you would do this and that would give you uh exactly what you wanted um, but moving forward, is there anything I missed on this? No. Okay, cool. Uh, there's Runic Tip. Runic Tip is activate one of these effects, skip your next battle phase after activation, and all the Runic Quick Play spells make you skip your next battle phase after activation. So if you do plan on doing any sort of damage to your opponent via attacking, uh, maybe attack first, then play your Runic cards, and... When you end your when you want to end your turn, I just go to battle phase. That way, I know I'm skipping my next battle phase, and I don't uh, try to enter battle phase later on and be forced to skip it because that has happened to me a couple times. So, runic tip: add a runic card from your deck to your hand, except runic tip, then banish the top card of your opponent's deck. The second effect of all the quick play runic spells is special summon a runic monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone. And all the runic cards are a hard once per turn. All the quick plays at least. Uh, runic Flashing Fire. This one's target a special summon monster your opponent controls. Destroy it. Banish the top two. Runic Destruction is target a spell or trap card your opponent controls. Destroy it. Then banish the top four. And then Freezing Curse is target an effect monster your opponent controls. Negate its effects until the end of the turn. Banish the top three cards of your opponent's deck. And then we have Runic Slumber, target a face on monster in the field. Next time it would be destroyed by battle or card effect. It is not destroyed. It cannot attack this turn. Then after applying this effect, banish the top three of your opponent's deck. And then we have Runic, Sm Runic Smithing Storm, which is banish the top cards of your opponent's deck up to the number of cards they control. This is good because if your opponent has exactly two cards left and you can't activate one of your other Runic spells because it would banish more than two cards, you can always activate Runic Smithing Storm because you can banish up to. So if they have four cards, you can always banish two. Uh, and that's one of the good things about this. Um, next we have Runic Golden Droplet. Your opponent draws one card, then banishes the top four from their deck, which takes away five cards from their deck. It's pretty good. And the next we have Runic Dispelling. If your opponent adds a card or cards from their deck to their hand, except during the draw phase, discard a random card from their hand, then banish the top two cards of their deck. Very good effect. Works really well with uh, Golden Droplet. You can actually use the two together. And the next we have Sword Soul Blackout, which uh, just a real quick reminder on that is target one worm monster you control and two cards your opponent controls. Destroy them. If Blackout's banished, you can special summon a Sword Soul token. Worm, Tune, or Water, level four, attack zero, defense zero. Uh, while that token is in the monster zone, the player who summoned it, you can have some special summon monsters from the extra deck except synchro monsters. So keep that in mind, if you want to bring out the runic ones, you, you have to get rid of token first. You can only use each effect of Swords of Blackout once per turn. And finally we get to the extra deck. We got three Hugin the Runic Wings. It's two runic monsters, but you'll never use that. And it's pretty much the same with these other guys as two runic monsters, but there are no runic monsters unless you count these and you fuse them, but that's silly because we just special summon them with the second effect of all the runic quick plays. So, when a special summon from the extra deck, then discard a card, add a runic field spell from your deck to your hand. If another card or cards you control would be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish this card instead. If this card in the field is destroyed by a battle or card effect, return it to the extra deck. And then next we have Moon and the Runic Wings. If it's special summon from the extra deck, you can discard one card, add one runic continuous spell we're not running the continuous spell so we're not going to worry about that 
But the second effect is when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a runic or runic cards you control or set card or cards you control. You can quick effect, banish this card you control, negate the activation, destroy that card once per turn during the end phase, gain a thousand life points. So it's okay. And then next we have two Jerry the Runic Fangs. Can't be destroyed by card effects. If special summon from the extra deck, you can target one non-quick play runic spell in your graveyard, which would be the field spell in our case, added to your hand. When this card is destroyed, you can target one card in the field and destroy it. And then next we have Pearl Dragon. Once per turn, you can discard a card, target one card your opponent controls, destroy it. If the Synchro Summon card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can draw one card. You can only use this effect of Pearl Dragon once per turn. And then next we have one Baxia, two Sword Soul Grandmaster Xing Zhao, one Baron de Fleur, one Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign. I would bump this up to, to two if you're really serious about playing this deck and probably take out one of the one of this guy um and then next we have sword soul sinister sob rain long long if you synchro summon another worm monster when this person on the field you can draw a card if your opponent special summons a monster or monsters except they're in the damage step you can banish one of those monsters and inflict 1200 to your opponent when they activate a spell or trap card quick back you can banish that card and inflict 1200 to your opponent you can only use each effect to Sword Soul, Sinister Sovereign, Bing Sing Long Long once per turn. And the next we have two Monk of the Tiny, just so we can get our Tiny shenanigans on easily. And that's it for this deck. Uh, let me know what you think about it. I've played it a little bit. I haven't messed around with it too much, but it's been pretty consistent and pretty fun. Uh, let me know what you think down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.